Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today, because, well, you're here with me, and you forgive me for what I'm about to do, please, please. Well, I showed you, I showed you what happened, we got a clue uh, about what, what happened last episode, we got a clue about, who was it actually? Oh, the, uh, yeah, the Time Serpent, uh, that apparently cannot be defeated, but... What does Flanker know, really? What does he know? I don't know if he was the one that stole my, um, my, my, my sword. And I've been deliberating off camera. We really didn't gain anything up there, uh, except for the beauty that this, this is a really beautiful, uh, beautiful place. We didn't go up there for, for, for sure, but still, it is a very nice place. We got that, we slept, which is also interesting, but doesn't really matter too much. So what I'm gonna do, uh, because, you know, last episode we lost our legendary sword. That thing is our lifeline. We have minus two stamina, maximum stamina anyway, um, and we, we have all our fingers, which is good, but uh, the sword is going to be important. And the thing is, if I could go back over there, not to actually what is there, but uh, to, uh, to the thing, I might have considered going on without the sword, but I can't go back there because those guys hate me. So I can't buy the legendary sword because he had one, um, and yeah, I could buy it from there. But uh, So yeah, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to rewind. I'm sorry, but uh, that is what I must do. We took we took the opportunity to go up there. It was very nice. It was very nice. But we're gonna rewind and keep our stuff. We didn't really gain anything except for talking with um, with uh, Flanker. Uh, so I'm gonna look up at the arch, see all this stuff, and 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 do all of this stuff. Uh, but I'm just gonna have to move on. The pillar might be climbable. Otherwise, several paths lead into the trees. And we're gonna go over here because this is our path. We're going the west side, and you'll see. You head west following the line of the bridge into the trees. We can't rest here, and I don't think we need to rest, actually, because we're at maximum stamina. Um, so we're gonna lose four, I believe, or five. I don't actually know. If it's four, it's better. I probably won't be able to pray for, to Korga in a while. Korga is sitting back, contently asleep, and unwilling to aid you now. Yeah, because we prayed to him uh, a little while ago when we fell. I think, did we? Didn't we? I don't... Nah. Did we heal up with him or something? I don't know. The paths, the path winds tortuously through the forest. The stars are carpeting the sky. Strange shapes loom from the darkness on either side, and seen things growl close at hand. You continue your journey. It's the Snatter Cats. It's the Snatter Cats. But we're not finding anything, and this is all the present. You crash through thick trees until uh, using the hewing axe to open up a path. Oh, that's good. That because we bought this axe. Uh, you move on through the trees. Oh, this is really good. So we probably avoided something terrible over there. You walk on between the trees. A little light glows in the east. You creep forward through the dark towards an area of thick, curling bushes that look like clawing uh, claws in the gloom. Um, okay, creep toward the dark towards an area of thick, curling bushes that look like claws in the gloom. This is gonna be bad. Can I rest here? Do I need to rest here? Uh, do I lose stamina by resting here? Uh, we're actually about to see the sun rise right there. I believe that's the sunrise. Uh, doesn't it look? No, that's just a, a cloud, but I believe that, yeah, we're at the end of the day. Let's rest here and see what happens in the morning. We're probably gonna get assaulted because every single time that we rest in the present, every single time we get assaulted, something terrible happens, but let's do this. Except for when we were up there, but even then, something terrible happened, but anyway. You lay your pack down and settle to sleep under the cover of one of the bushes. As you lay your head, uh, your head down, you imagine you can feel a hand reaching down and gently stroking your head. Uh, you open one eye to see the branches of the bush above you, nodding against your bro brow. It is just a breeze. Okay, just a dream, no doubt. The gentle caress continues, along with a whispering, shing sound of vibrating leaves. You settle into a deep sleep, but for some reason you will never know. You will never wake. You have died mysteriously in your sleep. Oh, at least tell me what it is. Huh. Well, let's rest here and let's change the sleeping um, place. Still, you do not trust it. Getting back to your feet, you go to your sleep uh, to sleep somewhere else and trip over. One of the tendrils of the bush is caught around your foot. I can cut it free. You draw your legendary. So what the hell is this? Okay. You draw your legendary sword to hack away the branches, but they seem to sense the threat. Long wooden tendrils whip out, grasping your wrists and arms. You cannot swing your sword now, and meanwhile, another tendril is looping itself around your neck. I can use an item, I suppose. You tilt your head down, 
uh, to peek into your pack. Perhaps you can use something from in there more easily than pulling out your sword. We got the axe, that could be good. The vial of poison, the essence of bark. Uh, what did that do, the essence of bark? We got this from where exactly? Mm, I don't actually remember. I suppose the axe is gonna work here. It should. Let's do. Let's do that. Um, you reach in with shaking fingers to try and lift the hewing axe from your back. The axe seems to take on a life of its own, jumping around in your grip to best position its blade to sever the branches of the strangle bush. It makes incision after incision until your wrist is free. Uh, I'm gonna cut my neck free first. Although that might... Oh. Working with fast, joyous abandon, you free first your neck and then your arm, then rub your throat and gasp for breath. It is a pleasure cutting the, br the bush further back still. It tries to retreat, but being rooted, it cannot escape completely. You step out from the small pile of hacked branches you have created. You put a healing back, uh, the axe back. Okay. Well, nothing terrible happened there, but that was a bad place. That was a bad place. We didn't sleep, though. You gained one provision, reached the forest of Snada, and you defeated the morning serp the moon serpent, sorry. Meaning there are now only five serpents remaining. Yes indeed there are five serpents remaining. Let's go. And we lost to seven, we lost four. That's perfect. You trace what might be a path and might be an old river through the, s the trees of the forest. You still fix sh feel shaky from your encounter with the strangle bush. In the distance, the sun breaks over the horizon. You have been awake all night and are weaker for it. The smell of rotting leaf mulch... Reef, leaf mulch fills your nostrils. Time to move on. You, f uh, you must find your way to sh to the shore of Lake Ilklala somehow. It lies east. It lies east of the Horns, a towering range of mountains. For a long time, Annaland had hoped these peaks would protect them from the Archmage. No one knew his birdman could fly so high or so far. So we could go back. We don't want to go back, even though this crossing this forest is pretty lame, to be honest. I don't know what the past had for us, but it, it is pretty lame so far. Didn't we find something in the distance, or did we just see these things? Because my plan is still the same. I'm going to go around this um, and uh, try to see as many things of the present as possible. Although, actually, we could probably just make our way down there straight, because it looks like this place is all destroyed. And that looks like... it, it Doesn't it look like another beacon? Um, so if we aim at that beacon, we can use this beacon to aim at something else probably up here or something so that thing looks like it's still working so I'm not really sure what's gonna happen I have I'm, this is the first time of course it's a blind playthrough so I have no idea I'm just you know trying to figure out things out things move in the canopy all around you the air moves a little uh, still icy but fresh the trees are alive with movement you march on let's go east you, the path winds torturously through the forest. As the morning moves on, the wind begins to rise. You have reached the edge of the forest. Through the trees, you can see the level steps extending into the baking shun sunshine. Time to choose a direction. So this wall trip was a complete waste of time. We didn't gain a single thing. A, not a single thing. We just wasted time in the forest. I can't believe it. It would have been better if I just went there and took this one. And uh, actually, it's probably the same thing, but uh, th that was a real big waste of time. Anyway, what can I do now? I, I, I don't really think I can get back my, my time. Let's continue. Oh, you head out across the steps as the sun climbs towards its zenith. The wind picks up. You In front of you stretches another plane, more rock than dust this time, and built of layers and layers of some of stone stacked like scattered papers. There are These are the Clatterback Steps, said to be the home of strange half-human, half-semian creatures. As you walk, you can see a, a, a strange sight, a village of listing huts. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 this is not good. This is not good. This one over here, I, sh I saw something. Can I go... Uh, you suddenly use string... Okay, this is the same way. Kept it free. Uh, yeah, we don't... We doesn't matter if we rest or not. That's all fine. We can use the hewing axe. Uh, right there. And it's all good. Cut off the other... No, go for the neck first. And then we're free. Okay. So the idea is, can we go anywhere? Because we saw something in the distance. And apparently we can't go anywhere. Ah, it's fine. It's okay. It's all good. Only 5%. Yeah, I know all about that. We didn't really gain or lose anything. I thought there might be something over there in the middle of the forest. Uh, but it doesn't matter. There's nothing. So let's go back to where we were. 
and uh, nothing terrible happens. We're all perfectly fine and okay. Let's leave the forest. And here we are. Okay, so what happens? Um, there's no. Oh, as you walk, you see a strange sight a village of listing huts in the middle of open space, with no walls or defense at all. Ugly villagers lope from tent to tent dressed in animal skins. Uh, now, I could cast a spell. If I can have the Sense Future, uh, which is the far, I believe. I don't have that. I have how? I have, um, Yaz. Invisibility. Eh, that could be an interesting thing. Although, I don't think I want that. And I have big, which I don't know is going to help me because it lasts for a little bit. Let's look at the village first. The men and women are strong and lanky, dressed in animal skins. By the gate, two creatures stand in hefty wooden clubs. Clatter man. Okay, let's move on. A path leads into the village, or how... Or you could skirt past. Let's not skirt anything. What is that one for? What does that say? It says... I can't read that, and I'm sure you can't either, unless you have a huge screen. Skirt past, it's what it says. Oh, oh, that's that, that parallax right there, it's kind of weird. Huh. Anyway, let's, uh, you see that? Uh, let's go into the village, these guys are very happy. You approach the guards, they look at you with expressions you cannot read. Uh, well, I could, if I could read minds, that would be amazing. These guys, I probably, I have the green-haired wig, I'm sure they're gonna think better of me. I don't know what the spell for that is. Yeah, I, I, I would love that. I would love that, wouldn't I? Wouldn't I now? Anyway, let's see. I have the res, which is to resurrect the dead. I have the holy water, but why would I want to resurrect the dead? How the hell can I do that? Or why? Talk all languages, that's the one. Removing the green wig, you pull it, you pull it onto your head and complete the spell. But the Clatter men are not speaking, so there is no language for you to understand. Um, what do you want, you ask? The Clatter men look at you without expressions. If they have understood you, they give no sign. Let me pass, you demand. The clatter men look at you without expressions. If they have understood you, they mm, give no sign. You remove the wig in irritation. Let's greet them. You nod in greeting. One of the clatter men nods in reply and holds out his hand. The other clatter man holds up two fingers. Um, so, holds out his hand in two... Two things. You open up your bag to consider what these guards might want. Two gold pieces, I guess. Food? Um... To what, you ask? Do they really... Are they not... I don't think they talk. Um, let's two gold pieces them. You hand two gold pieces. The clatter man nearest you seems to love the shininess and takes the coins. The other stands aside and lets you pass. They do not speak. And, uh, yeah, we're going in there, aren't we? Yeah, I can't really do anything else. Let's... This is the past. Oh, no, this is the present. So, who knows what was here before. You step into the sand... Maybe we're gonna find the, the ascendants of these guys and that'd be... And that's gonna be sad or something. You step into the center of the village. Actually, I, I've been noticing that it's written in the British version of, of the... Of the word centra, uh, which is a little bit more from the Latin. Um, but, uh, yeah, the center would be written the other way around if it's American, right? Uh, so maybe Steve Jackson is, uh, is, is, is is British? I don't know. I thought he was Californian for some reason. Um, but, yeah, I've noticed that before as well. Uh, by the fire, and we have the large hut. So I suppose maybe we could go to the large hut first, because these guys sound pretty angry. Anyway, one hut, uh, happy, which is kind of the same. One hut is much larger than the than others. Above its door is, 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 is above its door is a sign depicting a uh, depicting a picture, apparently. Even though, anyway, of an owl. Is that how it's written? All? What? It's not. It should. It's with an O, right? The the woo -hoo thingy, the, like the the bird, isn't it? Anyway, all. I don't know what an all is. I, I don't know. And a hammer. All in a, yeah, I don't think that's a that's a bird. It's something else. I don't know what it is. It is amazing anyone here can draw, let alone perform crafts. Oh, so maybe it's a tool. It probably is a tool, uh, because I don't know m many names from tools. From inside, you can hear the sound of hammering. Let's enter right now. You push open the door and go inside, and somebody is going to hammer me in the face, or all me in the face. Looks good. Looks good. Looks like the only place I can go in. The Clatton, the Clatterman looks up as you enter. He puts down a tiny hammer and pincers he has been using to repair a piece of fine jewelry and tilts his head to regard you. Let's greet him. You greet him with a nod. He seems to understand this and nods in reply. 
uh, let's examine his workbench. You step forward and look over his workbench, and he gestures with an opal palm to let you look. The Clatterman has a variety of fine tools, pincers, awls, there it is, spikes for scratching and etching, even a vice. Oh, the vice, I know what this is. I, I know what this is. That's the only weird name for a tool that I know. It's the vice. Um, for some reason. I, I think it's from watching series or whatever. He is clearly a master craftsman, despite his species. Uh, yeah, they don't talk. When you are finished, he steps forward to, to you, gesturing for your pack. I'm gonna show you my pack. You hold out your pack to him. He begins to rummage through, investigating everything with his long, supple hands, and occasionally pausing to scratch his bulging skull, as though his brain is itching at the sight of your gear. But he finds nothing that holds his, his, his interest. He hands you uh, back your pack and returns... To his work. Let's watch him work, because I can do anything. You, you see, it seems like he is carving jewelry from colored stones. They do not seem to be precious or even beautiful, but the weird, twisted shape he is carving are complex and intricate and remarkably precise. You reach out to take one of the pieces, a bejeweled item of clear value, but he responds much more quickly than you expect, snatching up a strange two-handled contraption. He opens the handle, and the device expands on a series of crisscross uh, crease crossbars. At the far end is a blade, which skewers you through the shoulder, pinning you to the wall. He tilts his head the other way, and to make his point, wiggle the contraption, making your shoulder bleed. What can I do here? Let's cast a spell. You try to sp Oh, this is not good. You try to spread your arms to collect the starlight for a spell, but the Clatterman twists, uh, simply twists the contraption. And you all in pain and sees... I'm gonna say this, but it's not gonna work. Release me, you demand. The craftsman listens with interest, but does not react with extended arm. Beg for release. Let's go with that. You beg him to release you, appealing to all the gods and spirits you can name. The craftsman appears to respond with the name of Rumurum, the cloud god, is mentioned. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Are these... So we need to talk to the marsh goblins. These are not marsh goblins. I don't think so. The Murumuru god is mentioned and slackens his grip on the contraption enough that you are able to push it free and stagger clear. Bowing your head in supplication, you move backwards towards the doorway and then hurry out of the hut. Huh. So we just lost a bunch of health. A bunch of health right there. I wonder if we can... We couldn't do anything there. That's just a trap. Let's, uh... Let's sleep away right there. Uh, let's go over here to the hut, or to the fire, and see if we can eat something or something. You head over to the fire pit, but it is unlit during the day, and there is no one here. Stop and eat. Oh, I ate one of my rations. Taking a hunk of cooked meat from your pack, you feel your empty stomach. You look around the village once more. I wonder if that, that actually that gives me more health if I am at a resting place, I believe. Rather than just eating it from the, the backpack, I believe that's how it goes. So this was a huge waste of time, I just lost one ration. That's okay. The village has no wall. Actually, I didn't lose one ration. Uh, because I would need to hit that ration. I'm not gonna need to eat it tonight, so it's gonna be anyway. The village has no walls. You sleep between uh, two huts and are on. Is on. I am on my way. I can't go. I'm not gonna go west from here. I'm gonna go this way to the cl through the Kalata back st steps uh, and the horns of Ilklala. No. Oh, the, those are twin peaks right there. Um, let's go down here and uh, continue on with our journey. You march onwards, ascending and descending as the ground breaks and changes level. Heat beats down from the cloudless sky. To the southeast, a huge mountaintop rises, its peak dusted in with snow. It is the southern extent of the Horns of Ilklala. Look at the mountain. Near its base is a carved shape, a turreted tower built into the stone of, of the slope. Drawn by some instinct, you regard the compass. Its needle has swung to point south, not in the direction of the mountain and the tower, but somewhat further west. You put the compass away once more. You stride onwards. Okay. So I need to go there, right? But it's... Uh, it's the compass we got at the end of last game, by the way. If you don't remember, I am... I don't know if I need to go there, but hopefully this is not going to be terrible, because if it is, I, I can't... Ooh. You walk on, climbing slightly across the, the dusty steps. The sun begins to dip, heading towards the horizon. The scrubland is broken quite suddenly by a small waist-high point, to which is a nailed and a, uh, is nailed a hand a written notice. It's yeah, a nailed a written notice. Anyway, let's read it. You pause to, uh, to read the sign. The writing is crabby and difficult, but you slowly decipher it. Stop, traveler. Every wish can come true, for this post marks the grave of the god Benanga. Call his name and close your eyes to be blessed forthwith. 
Uh, let's cast a spell first. Because we... Uh, because far. No, I don't have it. Damn it. Sense danger. Let's go with that. Uh, sun? Why would I want the sun? Let's cast it. It's not gonna work. You spin the constellation in shape around you, and the soul jewel in the back begins to emit a brilliant, blinding light. Call the name Bananga. You stand carefully by the spot and call Bananga to the empty air. Nothing seems to change. There is no sense of danger or blessing in the air. Uh, wait, 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 what did I need to do? Um, come, call his name and close your eyes. Close my eyes. You close your eyes as the note instructed. Nothing happens. You say it's no danger. Let's open my eyes. You open your eyes a crack. The planes are still empty. But the post seems to have slid a little into the ground. Then you feel something move under your feet. You step away from the post just as the ground beneath the post gives away and collapses into the earth. You have avoiding falling into the trap by mere moments. You peer down the side of the pit. At the bottom, a small badu beetle is borrowing. It works with its soft mandibles uh, to fill in the pit with sand once more. Throw the shakram at the beetle. You carefully aim the shakram at the beetle and throw it. The shakram split, splits the beetle's soft young carapace and it dies swiftly, green blood oozing into the sand of the pit. You leave the side of the pit. You continue on your way. No, I don't want to lose the shakram. Are you crazy? Go down there and get it back. Screw that. Seriously, that's a waste of time. Forget about that. Walk on. Yeah. You ignore the post and move on. Okay. I, I wonder how we detected me. Let's go over here. I don't want to... I, I want to see what that is because I'm probably... I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. No. Actually, I think... Let, let's try this. Nah. You see how long it takes me? It's wasting time. Yeah, I noticed this before. I noticed this before, but I just want to see what this is. It's definitely something. It's a temple. Holy crap, this thing, this thing is awesome. Let's go back. Oh, I want to see what that is. I want to see. I can't decide, though. I can't decide which one I want to see. Because I want to see what that is first. Oh, let's go Let's go here first. Let's let's make as much of an informed decision as possible. Because if the temple is not there, it could not. It could be somewhere. It could be unbuilt by the time in a thousand years before. You keep moving, the ground dropping a little. The wind picks up as the evening draws on. Soon it will be dark. You notice something white, stark against the, dray, the gray of the dust. Hmm. Let's look at it. It is just a, sli a sliver of cool white, visible through the thin, dusty scrub. Something is buried here. You wipe away the dust from the object. It is short, dirty, white, and gently curved. You dig around the object and find two similar objects. To the left and the right, they lie parallel in the dirt. You squat down on your heels and dig in the dirt a little more. Eventually, you uncover three short white rods. And at that moment, it becomes obvious that they are finger bones of a hand, clenched into a fist. The fist points upwards, as though its owner had been buried standing upright in the soil. You keep digging. The fist gives way to a wrist and then an arm. It is as though the creature was trying to climb out when the soil of the land closed over its head. As you go lower, the bone starts to accumulate a leathery coating. At first you think it is the remains of a coat, but then you, once you locate an anchor and sail tattoo, it becomes clear it is skin, somehow preserved in the soil. You are now into serious digging, which is hard work. You pause to take a break every few minutes and stop once more when you have the figure unearthed down the waist. Its skull is dried a leather ball with two grey-brown eyes shrunken into the sockets. It wears a metal ring through its, pose and, uh, through its nose and the remains of a beard are just visible. Its jacket is better preserved, its color faded, but its button still intact. It wears a small three-cornered hat. Striking just above, <clears throat> sticking just above the waist are the remains of some kind of hardness. It is possible this figure had a false leg. It was a pirate, you dumbass! Uh, let's search the figure. <clears throat> you rifle through the figure's jacket but find nothing of interest in the pockets. Not even one gold piece. Around its neck, however, you find a small metal whistle, which you can take. Uh, I am gonna... Why can't I... Which you take. Why well, I take it already. Okay, I take the hat as well. You take the hat from the creature's head, but it is of little use. It crumbles to dust in your hand. More interesting is what is left behind. Under the figure's thin covering of hair, you can see a dry leathery scalp inked with another tattoo. You examine the tattoo carefully. It shows two long thick lines that come together to form a V. At the top, another stroke crosses so the shape becomes an inverted A. Uh, inside the top of the A, near the tip, is a black X inside an O. Okay, I can uh, draw this. Uh, so, basically, 
uh, it shows two long thick lines that come together uh, to form a V. So why are they long and why are they thick? That's kind of weird, but okay, that's like a V. And then at the top, you guys can write this down, by the way, if, you, if you're interested. Uh, I'm going to do it right now because it's interesting as well. At the top, another stroke... Uh, uh, wait a minute. It shows two long thicks that come together. At the top... So at the top of the V, another cro stroke crosses, so the shape becomes an inverted A. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Um, but at the top, another stroke, but it doesn't say it's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, thick, but I'm, I'm just going to draw it right there. Inside the top of the A, near the tip, so the top of the A, oh, I see what it is. Oh, what the hell is that? It's like over there, in the little bit of the A is a black X. Well, they, I suppose it's all black because it's that tattoo inside a no. So it's kind of weird, but I think I can, I can draw it. It's really easy, actually. I, I wouldn't. I think that's a, yeah. Perhaps it is a map, but if so, it surely it is surely too vague to read. Let's keep digging. Yes, yes. The sun is sinking and the sky is turning bruise purple. You work hard as still, creating a deep pit and getting down as far as the figure's knees. The one leg is indeed wooden, and the other trouser clad bone. Uh, keep it digging. Let's just do this. We're gonna sleep tonight, so it's not a problem. The sun is now in the lowest quarter of the sky. It will be night soon. You dig down to the feet, uh, figure's feet. So it is still. Uh, so it is standing proud in a five foot. Hole. Water begins to pull around your feet. The sun is almost set and the sky is turning to deep purple. Soon it will be dark. The figure keels over, face down against the dirt. You have wasted a lot of time in burying it, but have discovered nothing. Well, I'm definitely not going to rebury it. You roll yourself up out of the pit and leave the figure standing in its hollow like a ghoulish statue. Some suddenly the creature in the pit begins to shiver and shake. It is moving, arms reaching out to grasp you. Uh. What? Um. I don't know what that tattoo is. I'm gonna watch. You watch in horror as the eyeless creature drags itself up from the pit to the edge, then shumbles and clatters away westwards across the steps. It disappears into the dust, though after a short while you hear a clattering sound, most likely the sound of its bones falling up to bits around it. The pit is now half filled with sparkling, gleaming water. There must be an, in an underground river that here that is feeding it. Okay, scoop some water into the gourd. And drink uh, some as well, you dumbass! You reach down, or maybe I could drink it myself, but it's gonna be fine. You reach down and fill the gourd with water. The way it sparkles as it moves makes it quite clear this is not an ordinary water. It, it is holy. Okay, there must be a sacred site nearby. Oh, that's why you re resurrected. You, mo you move quickly away from this ghoulish place. Okay, so we're gonna go right there. The, the night is actually... That thing is gonna... I don't think that thing is going to be necessary to go. I'm going to go over here. We know what awaits us in here. We're really, really tired. This is a problem because we're probably going to have to fight something here or do something because every tower so far, well, both of towers uh, are, are, have been protected in the past. So I'm Colonel RPG and this has been The Sorcery. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching. And I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.